every glycemic parameter has advantages and disadvantages. And the glucose curve is great because it's got the potential to show us how low the glucose goes. But it doesn't always do that. Um, and indeed, stress is a big enemy of the glucose curve. Um, so in certain cats, we don't do it because they give a stress hyperglycemia and as soon as we suspect that, we abandon that tool as a tool to try to monitor or manage the diabetes mellitus. But in some individual cats, it can be great because again, it is the only tool that gives us at least the potential to show us how low the glucose goes. What I think is truly the future is to go for novel technology and, and we're getting close to that. So at the Diabetic Remission Clinic we're now using the Freestyle Libre which is a continuous glucose monitoring system. So it's a little disc that we place on top of the skin with a little probe that goes underneath the skin that the cats go home with. Um, and then provided that this stays on, and that is still um, a challenging thing, um, it can stay on for two weeks and can give us continuous glucose data for two weeks at home, uh, which I think is really the way forward because we get a lot of data and that will enable us to, to, to make judgments. Is this insulin dose correct? Is this insulin type doing it for this cat? Above all, we integrate it with the clinical picture as well. So again, I'm really an advocate for not uh, ditching any glycemic tools, uh, but also being critical about the value that they give to us. So critical about the disadvantages. And indeed, stress hyperglycemia is a big enemy of the glucose curve. And the other thing I think as well, going forward, is that we should get the owners more involved with their diabetic cats. And um, we've done hundreds of interviews with diabetic cat owners um, and they've told us we feel a little bit left out. Um, they feel they want to be more involved with the diabetic care of their pet and they feel that their practice is a bit of a black box. They drop off their cat and the cat comes out and the vet tells them to increase by one unit, but they don't feel that they own that process. And for this reason, we've developed the, the free pet diabetes app, which actually is a tool for us to communicate with the diabetic pet owner and for the diabetic pet owner to communicate with us and give us essential information. I said before, the clinical image doesn't lie, whereas the glycemic tools that we use do lie on occasion. So we should really document how well the pet is doing at home uh, in the highest possible detail. And this uh, diabetic pet app does that for us. <clears throat> so basically it guides the owner uh, to fill in clinical data um, and that is then collected and sent to the attending practice, to your practice, uh, so that you can build the best possible picture of how well this diabetic cat is doing. And on top of that, the owner feels evolved, which is really what they're crying out for. Um, so I think it makes the contact between the vet practice, the nurses, the vets and the owner so much more uh, easier and smoother and friendlier and more of modern times, really. It was really um, over time that we came up with a tool like that uh, to help manage the diabetic pet. So, so that is something we wouldn't recommend. Um, I spoke before that uh, we actually want to give the beta cells a spa break. Insulin is really the best drug that can be given to a diabetic cat with high glucoses. The oral hypoglycemics are not a spa break, they are Red Bull basically. So we are putting the ill beta cell on Red Bull and that might pay off for a few weeks but just like you and I, if we don't sleep enough and we just uh, take too many coffees in the morning, that works for a bit but in the long run it doesn't work and there will be a crash. Um, and that's the same with using oral hypoglycemics. They push the ill beta cell to pump out more insulin, but it's an ill beta cell, so it's not a good long-term strategy. I would always try to follow the evidence where available. And we've got now the evidence that 
a veterinary licensed insulin, bezodi prosync, is on average doing the trick the best with diabetic cats. Uh, it might be similar to glargine, and it looks to be similar to glargine on the basis of the latest studies, but again, it is not a veterinar veterinary licensed drug, glargine, and it therefore does not come with the legal uh, endorsement nor the uh, backup of a pharmaceutical company to help you if there is a problem. It doesn't come with a guarantee either that it will stay in the market uh, for a sufficient period of time at the right price that it actually is suitable for veterinary use. So therefore I would start my diabetic cats on PZI at the moment that's prosync um, and if that does not work for the individual cat I will not be doubting to change that insulin type to a different one because again each diabetic cat is different so it might be that the diabetic cat in front of us is benefited from another type of insulin but we need to start with one insulin type um, and, and the piece of iprosync is a good one to start off with. Can insulin has been our trustworthy go-to insulin for cats and dogs for a long period of time and we've had lots of success with can insulin both in dogs and in cats. Um, however, individual cats do not respond as well to the can insulin because of the short duration of action and that has been documented fairly well now. Um, so that can be the shortfall in some diabetic cats. Now because we have to choose to inject one insulin type and we've got two veterinary licensed ones, can insulin and prosync, uh, you would choose the one that on average works the best. But that doesn't mean that in individual cats, a can insulin treated cat um, uh, could, could, could do better as well. So um, again, there's inter-individual variation. Uh, but on the basis of the evidence, specifically in terms of the duration of action, uh, at the moment as an expert I would have to advocate the use of PZI prosync over caninsulin. But we still use caninsulin in cats as well, whenever uh, plan A doesn't work out. Um, um, and, and you know, caninsulin is still a good insulin type for cats that we've got in our practice as well. So we wouldn't proactively switch them over either. If it's working for that individual cat, then that's all good.